Delegate Levine, uh, 1931. I know this morning there are several uh, folks who have uh, multiple places to be, so we'll try to be accommodating, make sure everyone's heard in, in the way that they need to be in order to get to every place they need to be. Uh, Delegate Levine, why don't you tell us about uh, HB 1931, what's it gonna do for us and why we need this bill? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, and thank you for hearing the bill first this morning. HB 1931 is a recommendation of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act Council. Uh, it was substantially similar to a bill that I brought forward in HB 321 last year. It was a bill pre-COVID. I know those days are hard to remember, but basically what it does is it allows individual members of boards, commissions, city councils, basically folks serving localities, to attend meetings virtually uh, because of a family responsibility or some personal matter. Now, again, this is pre-COVID days. So it, it envisions that everyone else is meeting together. They are having a real meeting. There is a quorum. They're all in physical attendance, but a particular member uh, of the board cannot attend due to a, a family member's medical condition that requires a member to provide care for such family member thereby preventing the member's physical attendance or a personal matter uh, that they can attend virtually up to 25% of the meetings. The bill um, last year actually zoomed out of a different subcommittee, nine to one, uh, came to the floor of the house, passed in bipartisan fashion, came to the Senate and the Senate said, have you talked to the FOIA council yet? And I said, no, I just got this bill December, 2019. They said, go talk to the FOIA council. So we did, we went before the FOIA council and they liked the bill so much that they actually expanded its scope a bit um, and allowed more meetings to be attended virtually, um, a greater percentage of meetings. Now, why do folks need this? Um, they need this because a lot of our good honorable people that serve localities have important family matters to attend to as well. And in fact, we want to encourage folks to be able to continue their community responsibilities even when they have family responsibilities. Um, the bill was brought to me by Alexandria's vice mayor. Uh, she had to take care of her mother in Florida, very important thing, and wanted to continue to participate in Alexandria City Council meetings. I think the starkest case is made by Arlington County board member, Katie Crystal. Uh, Ms. Crystal had a child uh, premature. And although Ms. Crystal was okay physically, she had to take care of her newborn infant in the hospital who was born premature. I don't think anyone is suggesting that Ms. Crystal should have walked away from her infant in the, in the hospital to attend an Arlington County board meeting in person. Uh, but according to the law, as it is currently drafted, uh, she could only attend virtually two meetings in an entire year. So while taking care of her newborn, she had to pick, okay, she can vote on these two important meetings, but not these other important meetings. There's only five members of the Arlington County Board and Ms. Crystal's presence is, is very important. And she should be praised for wanting to continue her community responsibilities. I think lots of folks would have only taken care of their family in that situation. So the bill adds that um, you, if you're taking care of a family member's a medical condition that requires the member of the board to provide care for such family member, thereby preventing the member's physical attendance, what you do is uh, you have to notify the board you tell the chair, uh, the chair then notifies everyone in the community and there has to be a written policy. Now this is current law, but it has to be a written policy deciding when folks can and, and can't attend virtually. Um, if it's a personal matter, you have to make it with specificity and that has to be put in the record. And a lot of this is to protect from overuse uh, so that the board can actually refuse and say, no, your personal matter isn't important enough uh, we're not letting you uh, meet virtually, you must attend in person. So there's some protection from the board and frankly, from the voters. If the voters elect you and you miss, um, you attend too many meetings virtually instead of in person, the voters can take that out on the local member. And if you're appointed, the appointing body can do so. Last thing, the personal attendance is, um, like I said, under current law, you could, admit, you could attend virtually two times an entire year. Well, if you only have four quarterly meetings, two times a year, that, that's half your meetings. That's 50% that's of the time. That's a lot of time you're going virtually. Um, but um, if you meet monthly, that's 12 times a year. This allows up to 25%. So you could 
go three times virtually. And for folks like uh, Alexandria uh, that meet 52 times a year, you could go up to 13 times. Uh, the 25% was a specific recommendation of the FOIA Council. In fact, <clears throat> there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was so much support for the bill that uh, a number of, of localities asked for it to maybe have no limitation, but the FOIA Council came up with this compromise of 25%. I should finally note the, yes, the tremendous support for this bill. Um, it is supported by more than 100 local officials uh, and organizations, a, a really an incredible number um, of folks. And in fact, there's a letter signed in the, in the public um, comment where you can see the long, long list of names. We have elected officials, more than 100, I won't read them all, from Arlington, Alexandria, Fairfax Falls Church, Herndon, Manassas, Charlottesville, Blacksburg, Prince William County, Dumfries, Spotsylvania, Norfolk, and those are just the ones that I, <clears throat> excuse me, I see right now. It's also supported by uh, VML, uh, by VACO, by the Virginia chapter of the National Organization for Women, and AAUW, uh, American uh, University uh, Women, uh, I think the reason why a lot of women's groups support this so much is because a lot of women uh, don't want to have to make that difficult um, choice between serving their family and serving their communities. Now they don't have to. This bill allows them to do that. And finally, I would note this is not an all virtual meeting. This is not what we're doing now. This is not about emergencies and COVID. There's another bill coming from Senator Jeremy McPike that I also worked on. It deals with that situation. This is an ordinary situation. People are meeting in person and someone needs to attend a meeting virtually. So with that, um, I urge uh, support for this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Del Delegate Levine. Uh, questions from members of the uh, committee? All right, we have uh, a number of people to uh, public for public com comment. Unfortunately, uh, we're not gonna be able to hear from all um, 50 or how many there are. I'd like to hear from a couple of people from both sides. Uh, we're kind of limited with time this morning. Uh, do you have, uh, we have somebody from a group that might represent, is Michelle Gowdy here? Yes, Madam Chair, she is. Um, Michelle, if you could join the room and unmute your mic and you have two minutes for your comment. Sure, good morning. It's Michelle Gowdy from the Virginia Municipal League. We've worked really hard with Delegate Levine over the last two years. And I just want to, first of all, thank him for all his efforts on this. It really has been a group effort. Um, Elizabeth Bennett Parker was kind enough to bring this to our attention two years ago. And so VML and all of its members strongly support this bill and we thank you for your vote in favor of it. Thank you. Uh, someone else on the list? Um, uh, Madam, yes. uh, who's the yes. next person that signed up? Might rec represent a group of people. Yes, um, Madam Chair, we have Megan um, Ryan um, in a, for against uh, the legislation. All right, we'll hear against folks in just a moment. We can okay. hear the four people first. Yes, Perhaps yes, Madam the Chair. Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, um, so the next person that we have in favor of the legislation is. Um, Phyllis Erico, if you could join the meeting and unmute your mic. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Phyllis Erico with the Virginia Association of Counties. Um, and we value transparency, we value participation. We want to have um, our best citizens serve our localities. And we also seek balance for these folks that serve us so well. We think <clears throat> that this legislation makes that balance so that people can take care of their families and also serve their localities. And we strongly support this legislation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming to speak. Now let's hear uh, two people in opposition. Um, you mentioned uh, Megan Ryan. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, Megan Ryan, if you could enter the mic and introduce yourself and your state your position. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the committee. Um, so VCOG has spent, um, I'm Megan Ryan with the Virginia Coalition for Open Government, and we've spoken many times on this bill, both when it was introduced last year and again at the FOIA Council, and our position has been consistent 
and that we don't think that the number of opportunities for members of a public body to call into a meeting, instead of being face-to-face -face with the public and their colleagues too, should be overly expanded. Now, while I appreciate the delegate's advocacy for his constituent, and while we do understand the need for some flexibility for larger boards, we think that both adding a sick family member as a new category of unlimited remote participation combined with an increase in the total number of personal matters is an overreach. So we are asking uh, that the bill be amended to strike out either lines 19 through 21 or lines 24 through 25. Um, I just want to point out in response to some of the arguments, there is absolutely no correlation between the call-in rules and the number of women serving on boards. That would imply that in states that have looser rules than Virginia does, have more diverse or more women on their boards, and that's simply not the case. And according to the Rutgers University Eagleton Institute of Politics Center for American Women in Politics, reports of continuous growth in female candidates and those elected to office has been ongoing since 1971 when these rules have been in place. Um, and finally, I would uh, just also add that um, asking voters to throw people out may work for the elected boards, but this would also apply to all those boards that have appointed members. And it is very unlikely that a um, voter would throw out an elected official because someone they appointed uh, mis misused this particular uh, expansion of call-in times. So again, we would ask that you strike um, either uh, one of those um, particular expansions um, and leave the other one intact. Thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking. Uh, we have one other person to speak uh, against the bill. I'm looking down. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bohannon, are you here? Um, uh, Madam Clerk, is there someone else? Who's the next person that signed up in opposition to the bill? Madam Chair, there. Um, that concludes the against, um, those signed up against this bill. All right, thank you. Uh, other comments? Uh, from the members of the count of the committee. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Delegate Simon. Yeah, th this is uh, this bill was heard fairly extensively at FOIA Council. We had a lot of testimony. Um, I, I know that it, we, we, that Levine worked hard to get everybody that he could on board. Uh, obviously, there are still some reservations about some of it, but. I think given uh, the, the, what we've seen and how effective virtual participation can be, I think this is a good bill. And so I would move that the bill be reported. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, clerk will open the roll, please. Madam Chair, would you like me to call the names of those who have not voted electronically? Yes, please, Madam Clerk. Delegate Miares. Delegate Miares. Delegate Carr. Carr votes yes. Delegate Carr votes yes. Clerk will close the roll. HB 1931 report uh, to the full committee. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Delegate Levine. Thank, Thank you, you Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. Uh, Madam Clerk, is uh, Delegate Murphy here? Yes, Madam Chair, she is. Delegate Murphy, let's hear your bills. Uh, which one do you want us to hear first? First numerical. Let's go with 1996. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm in two committees at the same time right this minute. Um, 
1996.